about a hundred years ago. The first catalog homes rolled into Saskatchewan. They were shipped by rail and put together locally. And I'm guessing if you look around the province today, you'll still see some of those mail order homes standing. On Thursday night, John Robinson of Robinson Residential Designs will be telling stories about these homes at Regina's Artesian on 13th. But this morning, he joins me pictures in hand, with an advanced taste of some of those tales. Hi, John. Good morning. So when did you first start being interested in catalog homes? As a kid, we, um, we grew up on a farm, and we grew up in a house that we'd always been told was an Aladdin house, and it was built in 1927. And when we would get in the way, Mom would give us the plan book that they ordered the house from in 1927. Wow. And we put it down on the living room floor and we'd get out our bricks and we would build houses out of that house, um, house book. And so now what's happened is the book is terribly tattered and torn, but all those pictures and images we saw were almost kind of sacred to us. That sounds corny nowadays, but... Um, and as, as I went on to be, learn how to design houses and build a career out of that, this was always my go-to resource from from 90 years ago now. It's so amazing that this is really, it's catalog homes that inspired your love of architecture, it sounds like. It is, and it's because it was like, it was a, our house when we were kids was getting kind of worn down, and by that point it was like 40, 50 years old, and um, it wasn't maintained the way that we would have probably liked to see our houses maintained, but at one time it was a pretty classy house, and I think that's what kept us interested in it. Okay. I, I want to go back a hundred years and just talk about when they first started being, you know, loaded onto trains, these kits for houses and sent out to the prairies. How revolutionary was that idea at the time? Well, I think it was about their only option because at that time, the first settlers came out, they were living in either a sod house, a wood shack, maybe stone, maybe log, maybe a hole in the ground. But they needed to start getting something better if they were going to keep their marriage intact, I think, or even <laughs> yes. attract anybody that would be even close to looking at them. So, so in the you know the Saturday Evening Post and all these newspapers that would come out, um, there'd be ads for get the house of your dreams, you know, seven hundred ninety-five dollars, uh, things like that. And so, people would bring it home, and I'm sure they they didn't stick it on the fridge in those days, but they probably stuck it on the wall and said, you know what, that's the house I'm going to have someday. They'd visit amongst each other and swap houses. And like these, these companies didn't really have salespeople. Their catalog was really their only salesperson. So. so $795 sounds like a bargain in today's standards. What kind of, you know, was that quite expensive back in the day? Or was that still a reasonable Well, I think price? in the 20s, there was a real, crops were good. And suddenly people could, with one year's crop, if it was a good crop, could order their house and be on their way. And so, but I think the big thing was, it was about the only way they had to get a nice house. The lumber yards that were selling um, two by fours and cedar shingles weren't going to have nice moldings. They weren't going to have exterior trims like they wanted. They didn't have a selection of window sizes. And these catalog plans, they had, some of them had definite architectural styles they were, they were following. Uh, so it was a chance to get everything shipped that they needed and all they had to do was find a way to put it together. Okay, that sounds like all they had to do was find a way to put it together, yeah. you know. <laughs> that could have been a challenge, I'm guessing, especially in rural Saskatchewan. How did they manage to make that happen once these kit houses arrived on the trains? Well, with Eaton's and Sears Roebuck, you had to cut your own lumber, but they sent all the lumber you needed. Aladdin, which was based in Bay City, Michigan, they were the big player in Saskatchewan, but they shipped everything pre-cut. So every board would be numbered, every piece of trim, you could put that house together yourselves. And it, it would happen in a matter of weeks. They'd have their house put together with just their neighbors and them. I have to laugh because there is a story out there of how these plans were so simple that two women built their house all by themselves. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> um, so it was just kind of funny how the thing, the lines that they used to make to sell, to get the point across it. Yeah. <laughs> The plans were anybody could build them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone could build them. And now women builders listening today would go, of course we could yeah, build them. <laughs> we could build it better, faster, stronger. Now, you have talked a little bit about these pictures that you sort of looked at endlessly in, in your childhood, but you've brought all sorts of stuff in with you today. Well, I've become a bit of a collector of um, catalog house books. I've got them all the way back to 1889 out of the U.S., 
And then a few years ago when I was on my eBay craze, I was buying everything that I could see on eBay. And these go back, uh, a lot of them in the teens. Uh, but Aladdin Homes, for example, they they shipped homes until the 80s. They finally shut down in the wow. 80s. Wow, wow. So they, uh, I've got catalogs from almost every decade of them, even including the 50s, which were kind of a sad time in residential design. You know, there was all about price and it wasn't all necessarily all about style. I can drive down the street now and spot <clears throat> Aladdin Windsor. That's what we grew up in. And we've got pictures all over Canada, North America of Aladdin Windsor's that we kind of, my brother and I, we take a picture and send to each other. So. Isn't that amazing? I'm guessing in Regina, it would be mainly in the cathedral neighborhood that you'd spot uh, those there's houses one, now? There's one on Dudney Avenue by the uh, Pasco okay. Hospital. There's yeah. another one in Old Lakeview. There's a couple in Cathedral. Um, but even in the Cineboy, the small town I grew up in, we had one on our farm, and there was one in town as well. It was kind of a unique shape, but anyway, that was why we could spot that house. Do you think these designs have kind of stood the test of time, in your estimation? I think the, the designs have, although a lot of these houses didn't have bathrooms, and people are funny about that nowadays. It's, you know, <laughs> That's it's like, strange, that? We yeah. want a bathroom in the house. <laughs> and, they, and a lot of these plans... Like we just live differently. We don't really want plans that are um, all cut, you know, cut up with rooms. And like in those days, every room would have a door, whether it's the living room or the kitchen to the hallway would have a door. Nowadays, we open things wide up, but people still see those houses and they like this, the, the feeling they get from those houses. But we just twist it around a different way to get uh, an open floor plan and a uh, you know, more contemporary. I, I have to say that, well, while I know that the open floor plan is so much, you know, it's the dominant force right now in terms of design, there's something to be said for being able to close doors in my estimation. You know, I think that will come back. Yeah. Um, everything goes around. Uh, and one thing we're finding now is we're getting more and more of our clients say, I don't want to be cooking that close to the living room. I want to be able to close it off and have, you know, different conversations in the house without all being in the same room. Yeah. And so I think it's all, you know, the thing about houses is one size doesn't fit all and one style doesn't fit all. When you think about how you approach architecture today and your own designs, is there still something of that young boy from, you know, from totally. the farm looking at those houses? When I was away at Christmas time, I designed an Aladdin Windsor that's only 500 square feet. Wow. Not as a tiny house, but as a small house. Yes. And there's something about even though those houses, some of them are very small, they still would never think about not putting trim on them and the correct trim, the correct proportion of trim. And if you have a kit house, you can probably identify it by the detail of the casing on the inside of the windows. Because the kit something? companies, they had very detailed window and door casings. They had nice doors. Someone who just simply built the house for someone and had the plans and then went to the local lumber yard and built it, they wouldn't have had the same level of interior trims, probably. So on Thursday night at the Artesian on 13th, you'll be involved in, in what is a, a Heritage Regina presentation about these catalog homes. What do you hope people get from, you know, from sort of dipping back into this history? Well, I hope people get an appreciation for how we used to live. So what I'm doing, I'm asking people to forget about the fact that they just came from work and it's 2018. I want them to feel like it's 1918 and they've, they're getting around to picking their first house. So look at these plans. We're going to go through dozens of plans on the screen. Go through these plans with the eye of this was what you're coming from today. You're not coming from um, Wascana View. So, <laughs> and I think that's what makes it all, it puts, it puts the right perspective on it. Okay. I think it's a fascinating conversation, and, and I'll look forward to, to coming out on Thursday night myself. But thank you for uh, taking some time this morning well, to talk to us about it. thank you for the opportunity. It. John Robinson of Robinson Residential Design will be at the Artesian on 13th Thursday night presenting a Heritage Regina and Civic Museum of Regina joint program about catalog houses. The event starts at 7, and the suggested donation, just 10 bucks.